I'm a Lightroom user. Why would I need Photoshop? Lightroom does everything I need. And that may be the case. So again, I'm not trying to convince you to pick one because I use them both all the time. It's really about knowing when and maybe you reached a point in Lightroom, for example, that you're, you're probably wasting time and you could do that thing you're trying to do in Lightroom so much faster in Photoshop. When would I need to do anything in Photoshop? Well, let's take a look at some examples. So first and foremost, I've got uh, a couple of portraits here I've worked on and I've, I've done, and this is what I would typically do inside of Lightroom. I would do as much as I can. So I, I changed the profile. I adjusted the global settings. I made it lighter or darker or whatever. Um, however, there are things that like Lightroom's just not suited for. Like for example, these shadows under her eyes where I could have done a better job lighting, like her eyes are just kind of dark. Now I, I can go into the masking and I did make a separate mask for the eyes and did brighten them a little bit, but there's just, and the brighten the teeth as well. And there's just, but there's just so much more I can do if I were to take this over to Photoshop. So let's let's head over to Photoshop with this image and show you what I mean. So first and foremost, let's right click on it. Let's choose, and normally I do this from the keyboard. So edit in Photoshop, this is Command E or Command Shift E on Lightroom desktop and the Lightroom Windows Control E or Control Shift E in Lightroom Cloud. All right, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna zoom in on this and one of the first things that people say is, oh, duplicate your layer. I don't really need to do that because I have the original back inside of Lightroom. But just for example, just one thing that uh, in this photo that I would do that Lightroom's really not suited for, and that's removing these, li these lines. So I've, I've done this a few ways. I've done it with the patch tool. And the nice thing about the patch tool is if you do it that way, depending on what it is and depending on what you have to work with, uh, here, let's do a patch. Removing it completely makes it look fake obviously, but now with the patch tool, you have the ability to go in and say fade patch selection. So I can go ahead and pull that back a little bit and kind of bring some of the original lines under it uh, to just make it look better. Now, um, you could argue, okay, well, can I just use the remove tool now? And you can. So let's undo that. And uh, Lightroom does have the same remove tool uh, capability, so you could do this in Lightroom. But the point is you have an option to do it either way here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, I got it set on auto right now. Let's just go ahead and say, use gender of AI on, there we go. And we'll let gender of AI cook on that. And the nice thing about gender of AI is it does pr put a line back in there. Now put a highlight in there as well, which I might not like, but it was able to put the line back in there as well. We'll do the second one and the second one didn't put a line in as much. So. Uh, just some work you'd have to do. But again, the ability to do all of this without having to think about it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, that's fine. You could argue back and forth whether or not you could fix that in Lightroom. But one thing you can't fix in Lightroom is how tightly cropped this is. So if I go to my crop tool and I say, ooh, I wish I had this a little bit more of her shoulder here, a little bit more of that arm here, a little bit more of her head here, I now have the ability to choose generative expand, something Lightroom doesn't currently have. Now, it doesn't mean that Lightroom won't get it someday, but today it does not have that. And so with Generative Expand, that's another reason why I would come to Photoshop. Um, and again, I got three variations to choose from. There's one, there's two, there's three. I kind of like one, probably the best. There's my one and away I go. Now, the other reason, uh, Lightroom can't touch putting text on a photo. I grab my type tool and click type and her name is Shadanice. And I can, of course, make that whatever size I want. It's a text layer. The fact that I am able to work in non-destructive layers, and I can even pick a color for that that's on the original photo. So if I want it like her skin tone to be the color of that text, I can. Uh, and away I go. And I didn't select the text first, so that's why I didn't change. There you go, let's try that again out here. Now we're getting those colors. So I like a color in her uh, blouse there. I can get that exact color without having to think about it. If I want her lip color, I can get her lip color. And again, the highlight in her lip, I can make it that color. And I can make it whatever color I want. And again, make it whatever font I want. Right now it's in a very boring Adobe Clean. I have 20,000 fonts, uh, 20,000 plus fonts on Adobe to work with, uh, part of my Creative Cloud account. I can choose whatever font I want. 
And uh, it's just that kind of stuff that is not really not possible inside Lightroom because Lightroom doesn't have any text capabilities at all. Lightroom doesn't have a current generative expand. Okay, so let's move on. Let's say we save this. All right, close it. And we head back to Lightroom and it puts it right next to the original. So here's our original photo with the shadows under the eyes. There's the one without the shadows under the eyes. It still needs work, but there it is with our text and generative expand.